blue Dilly dilly Lavender green If I were king Dilly dilly I'd need a queen Now let's assume you've decided on a cockapoo. Yes. Great. They're great dogs. They really are. Got to have the right families for them. Now because a cockapoo is actually I'd describe it as a designer mongrel because it's not a purebred. It's, not, it's neither a cocker spaniel nor is it a poodle. It is a mixture of the two. Now, a lot of the reason that people get them is that they don't lose much hair. But if you get one, you, you, you buy a cocker a cockapoo, you don't know whether it's going to take after it's after the poodle side or after the cocker spaniel side. So you might find it's got a lovely silky coat that's going to shed quite well, or you might find that it's got the curly, cock, you know, curly poodle coat. Something to bear in mind here is that when you see cockapoos advertised, you might see it advertised as an F1. Now F1 means that it is bred with between once its mother or father is a cocker spaniel and the other is a poodle. Now the poodle normally is a, a miniature poodle, but it could be a toy. It's unlikely it'll be a, a larger poodle because generally it's the male is the poodle in those circumstances. Not always, but generally. And the other types, one of the other types you might get commonly is an F1B. And that means that one of the par parties is a cockapoo already. So that's already a mixed breed. And then it's bred back with either a poodle or a spaniel, cocker spaniel. So of course then you're getting more of one type um, of breed in that one dog. So you've got a three quarters one breed and a quarter another. In a way the best way of describing a cockapoo is life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get until you get it. So bear that in mind when you're looking at cockapoos. Ask about the previous litter, litters if there were any, and see whether it's with, with the same stud dog to see what type of coats and that they had. And if you've got somebody in your family that is allergic to dog hair, don't presume that a cockapoo is not going to um, irritate their skin or something. If necessary, do you not know take the person along and let them rub their face in a dog? <laughs> it sounds strange. It's better. To, dis to, to decide at that stage you're not going to have that dog than to get it home and four or five weeks later end up having to sell this poor little bundle who's come into your home and you now love and it's got to go somewhere else. So let's look at where you're going to look to find this cockapoo that you've decided on. Well, you can go to the Kennel Club of Great Britain stud dog book they have lists of all the stud dogs. So if you, you can find um, a sort of poodle stud dog that, um, and then ask the stud dog owner whether they've served any um, Cocker Spaniels recently so that you can, you, you know what the stud dog's like then and you can start looking from that way around. You can ask, um, there are breeders out there who just breed cockapoos these days. So you can, you know, think in terms of those. Um, you, their vets sometimes will, will know of um, breeds coming up. Friends recommendations, that's quite a good way. Um, or there are online sites. Now, no, no matter which one of those you choose, you really need to use an awful lot of vigilance to make sure that you're getting the puppy that's right for you and your family. Remember, you're talking about 13, 14 years of your life that you're going to have this friend. Um, first thing I'd say is beware, please, please beware. Cockapoos now are so popular that, that they're coming in from all over the show. Um, and there are lots of puppy farms breeding um, cockapoos. And there are also quite a few coming in from the continent. Now the thing, to, one of the ways of looking out for this is if you're looking at online sites, check the wording. If you see the same wording coming up again and again and again in adverts, you know that it's probably a syndicate working on that one. Um, or, or, or just be aware that it could be. Um, beware if there are sort of, they're selling sort of eight or so puppies all 
ready now or ready in a couple of weeks time. It's really unusual for somebody not to have advertised or not to have some reserve puppies by the time they get to nearly re being ready to go. Beware of that. Doesn't mean to say that it will be that, but if you have that in the back of your mind, you're prepared to ask questions. Um, also, it, it beware of really, really cute pictures. You know, you see the pictures of them looking so cute, all these little bundles of fluff. You can, you can check to see whether that, those photos are, see, are anywhere else on the internet. And that way you can see if they've just lifted cute photos and put them in, in, you know, in their advert. So really, really beware. Don't be tempted to pay the full price of a dog up front. Don't be tempted to put a huge deposit down on a dog. Um, and don't be tempted to buy, to say you are, commit yourself to buying a puppy before you've ever, before you've seen it and before you've satisfied yourself that it's in good condition and that the place is right and that the mother is right. Always ask if you could, if the mother's available. Always ask about the mother. Ask whether she was health checked before she was mated. Ask about the birth. Ask how many puppies were there were. Ask how many survived, if all of them did. Ask about um, any previous litter she's had, whether you can speak to anybody who's had a litter from them before. Anybody who's genuine won't mind at all that you're asking this because they'll know that their puppy's going to someone who really cares. And that's what you are. You really want to care for this puppy and you want to give it the best possible start and give yourself the best possible start. You ask about medical issues with the mother. Has she had any? Has she had any DNA tests? Has, um, has she had any health checks? Well, has she got a hip score and things like that? So all those things. Don't be afraid to ask and don't think it's rude. It's not. It's common sense. Also ask about the stud dog. I mean, was it a friend's dog? <laughs> or, or was it a, prop, a stud dog? What's its history? Has it got DNA? Is it Kennel Club registered if you're buying an F1? You need, you need to ask as many questions as you can all about it, whether it's got DNA um, paperwork, whether it's got um, Kennel Club paperwork, um, what its health is like, what its nature's like. Anything like that, you can always ask. This is where you actually start thinking about the puppies. Up till now, you've been asking all the surrounding questions. Now you want to ask about the puppies. So how many puppies were there? What were their weights like? What you want to know is whether they were all sort of roughly the same weight or whether there was a runt of the litter um, and, and you know, what, how, how well they're thriving now or how much weight they've put on. I mean, you don't need to know sort of what specifics of weight should be. You just need to see that there's a graph going upwards and they're not wasting. Um, where have the puppies kept? Are they in the house or are they in a, 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 Some people keep them in sheds. Some people, uh, stud dogs, um, you know, breeding places, might be in a, a set of stables or something. Are they in the house? Have they got kids in the house? Have they got other pets in the house? Are they? Because if they're in the house, have they used to washing machines, hoovers, all those sort of things that you think of, you, uh, just general routine, it's going to fit into a house. If the puppies are in a house, it's also possible to ask about toilet training. Some dogs, you know, some people will actually have started toilet training your dog before, puppy before you get it. Um, are they kept in a crate? So you want to know... Um, exactly what their situation is and when you can go to see them. Now, often people won't let you go to see the puppies till they're about three weeks old. And the reason for that is obviously they're very vulnerable and you don't want people trekking in your house. It's, well, at a time like this, you can't trek into people's houses anyway. But it would be good practice not to have you come into the house till about the puppies are about three weeks old and their eyes are open then and they're starting to move around up till then they're just like little lumps that <laughs> just sit and squeak um, so then when you go along you want to see how the puppies are interacting with one another don't worry if they're all sleepy uh, they might just have been ask if they've just been fed and that um, 
what you want to do is just see that they're see what their conditions are at that first visit and then go along again and pick out hopefully pick out the one you want now that you might be asked for a deposit on the first visit that's all right um, I, I always would really like um, to have an option on a boy or a girl you've got to decide yourself whether you want a boy or a girl so say whether you want a boy or a girl or whether it doesn't matter and then have an option on a puppy and an order so the first person who phones in or is, is satisfies all the questions that the breeder wants to ask you and if they don't want to ask you anything go away because they're not you know they should be asking you lots of questions about where the puppy's going so you want to sort of um, be, have somebody who's going to say to you, right, well, we've got sort of five dogs and, and five bitches. And you say, well, I want a dog. And then they say, right, well, you're the first person phoned in for a dog, so you will get first pick. And then you pick that dog when it's moving around. So when it's about five weeks or six weeks, they're starting to move around, then then. Um, pick it that you'll have all these things about what you're going to want from the puppy what color and all these other things It's not important. What will happen is you'll fall in love with one <laughs> and You know you can do all the you know, All of this the list if you fall in love with it, you know, that's probably and it comes to you It's probably the puppy for you But bear in mind ask the breeder what the characteristics of the puppies are because they will by then have started to, to, to develop their own particular personality and there'll be some that are more active than others and some that are a little bullshit. It doesn't mean to say it's going to carry on for the rest of life, but it's a good guideline. And it also shows that the, that the breeder is actually, or the person who's bred the dog, is actually paying attention to the puppies and is interested in them and interested in you. And be prepared to be asked lots of questions and don't be upset by being asked lots of personal questions because that means that the person who's bred that puppy wants to make sure that it's the right puppy for you. Ask about puppy sales agreement. Do they have one? Hopefully they do. What sort of aftercare do they give you? Can you phone up and ask questions afterwards? Um, will they be? Will they have already had vaccinations? Uh, will they presumably have been vet checked? And you will hopefully get your puppy vet checked, vet checked yourself as soon as you possibly can after you've bought it. Um, and and you know what care package do they give you? If they just give you the puppy and a blanket and no food and no advice on food, again, that's, that's not enough. You need to know what the puppy's being fed because you want to keep that puppy's diet the same for at least a few days after you get it. Don't ever change a puppy's diet the, immediately you get it. Um, you know, are they going to give you um, one of the mother's blankets, Is it a, a toy or something like that? So because your puppy will 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 thrive much more if it has the scent of its mother on something. So all those sort of things, that's what you want to be asking. And then you can and then and only then can you get excited. Now, remember, this is a long time you're committing yourself to. It might take a long time to get the puppy you want. It took me nearly a year to find Dill. And that wasn't because there weren't other dogs around. It was that I wanted one that would fit into my criteria and came from a perfect background. And there were some backgrounds that I rejected and some backgrounds where I was a bit too late to get the puppy I wanted and some where the, the sales agreement wasn't right for me. So bear all that in mind take your time and then we can start talking about welcoming your puppy home. Enjoy the process. It will be torture at times, but when you get that puppy come through the door, my goodness, never look back. Good luck. Then I'll be king, dilly dilly, and you'll be my queen.